This is Alan Olson with America Dreams, The Keys to Life Success, where we talk about how to live the life that you want to. What are your dreams? What do you want out of life? What defines success? Welcome back. I have with me Al Holy of the Career Action Network. Al has spent some time in the um, in the job community working full-time, helping people who are in the workforce, unemployed, and looking to get back in. Our nation is currently um, facing an unemployment rate of about 9.1% as of September 1, 2011. This rate hasn't changed much since April of this year. Now, Al, I understand that you're in your organization you meet many individuals who are struggling with this unemployment. Uh, do you think that there are things that individuals can do to prepare themselves in case they lose a job? Right. Well, thanks, Alan, for having me. And uh, the answer to that question is absolutely, and it's, it's really simple. Uh, they have to invest in their personal network. And what I mean invest is they have to unconditionally help people in their network. Um, the key to getting a job, 80%, 90% of jobs are gotten through personal networks. And you have to have a really operative network uh, when, when you need to get a job. One of the, you know, we've worked with a lot of uh, executives and professionals that have lost jobs. And to a person, what they'll say is, I didn't do a good enough job networking. I didn't do a good enough job networking. And they're starting with a very weak network because they realize the key to the, the job is getting a key to getting a job is their network. So it's really, if you know the right people, it's, it's a lot easier to transition back in. Yeah, it's, you know, it's interesting. There's sort of two ways to do this. There's two critical things to networking. One is having a large Rolodex, knowing the right people. But that's not good enough, Alan. You have to invest in those people. There, there's a concept called reciprocity. And it's a concept, it's essentially the Good Samaritan principle or the pay it forward idea. And that principle is in every moral code almost in the world. And what's really interesting, there's been really large empirical research studies done recently that show that people that practice that are more successful, they're happier, and what's becoming important to me is they live longer, because I'm now pretty old. You know, I I, I love the concept of of the Good Samaritan and really practicing what you preach and also, you know, I mean, after all, isn't it about relationships it's critical it that's the critical part of networking is building relationships and this un- idea of unconditionally helping other people is that's the only absolute if you want to be successful in networking which is critical to a job you have to unconditionally help other people you know it's interesting Re- recently i was at an economic summit and before that we had a little fishing gig where uh, huh. there were about 20 of us that went off and uh, we we fished and uh, in our group we had Two of the Federal Reserve Board presidents. In addition to that, we had a, uh, a chief strategist who run a bond, trun- bond fund in excess of a trillion dollars. And, and so we, we had this, uh, the, this closed audience, and the, the, the guy that was running the bond fund held up this, this note, and he says, uh, so I have in my hand, it, it was a, a dollar bill. He says, on it, it says it's a Federal Reserve note. It does not have a due date doesn't have an interest rate and you don't have any money and this is before they they raise the debt ceiling so the the guys laughed at it but but you know the reality is this as good as we are and for the positions that we take none of those people in the room or with uh, with us in the the trip could have told you that the week after we met that the stock market would have fallen as far as it would fall and uh, it, it, it took a, and so there's this unpredictability of, you know, we know what we have in front of us today. We know where we've been, but nobody can forecast the future, um, and which I, I, I always come back to one of my uh, uh, key clients has said, as good as a stockbroker is, they can't tell you what the market's going to do. 
And so people need to protect themselves. They need to become prepared. They need to uh, become self-sufficient in a way. Alan, you know, you, you hit a good point. You know, you're a CPA. Would you say that our country is currently facing a recession? <laughs> We're already in a recession, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> but, but you know, how you define a recession is, is, uh, is interesting. People can make money in recessions or in, you know, when economies are expanding. Um, but it's all in the, 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 the recession just means that you have less resources to work yeah. without that. How would you suggest that we create more jobs here in America? I know. Let, let me turn that back to Al. What, what do you have to say get, about where get we... get more jobs. Yeah. Where, where are we currently at, Al? With, well, you know, let me... I want to... tell me. Uh, yeah, it's, it's interesting. This, I was listening today. I went online and was pulled up a uh, presentation by the, the director of the CBO, the Congressional Budget Office, who scores budgets... And he was making a presentation to this super committee. And what he said was something that I think is very important. He said, do not try to rely on history to predict what's going to happen in the future. You've got some mega trends occurring. And you talked to one of them about the uh, aging the baby boomers. And the reality is our economy is two-thirds based on consumer spending. And when people become older than when their children leave they don't spend as much money it's not likely that we're going to have the same degree of spending going forward and that's going to have obviously a profound impact on the economy the other factor that's entering in is you again touched on this is health care that we're going to strain put incredible strain on our health care system in our government forms of trying to fund that system and so everything is different. And, you know, so the, the question is, I think, um, what do we do about it? And uh, the answer is no one seems to know. Well, there's two factions currently at a tug of war in this country. One is on the, uh, you know, the, the president's plan, of, you know, as Obama presents the new job creation bill, but it accompanies with higher tax rates. Yeah. Uh, the philosophy in that case being that the government should be the one to solve our employment situation. Right, and, and there is two factions. There, there's the one side that says businesses, people create jobs. Government doesn't create jobs, but people do. That, that's Romney, and, and it, and, right? And it's well, Romney, of course, and, and even Perry, that the government needs to, to get out of the way and allow people to be entrepreneurs and be successful. When government con- creates jobs, you get jobs like Solyndra, that gets 500 billion, half... A million. 500 million, half a billion, excuse me, yeah. half a billion in government money and then fails. You know, let me jump in here because, you know, we're talking about important issues. But from my perspective, I can't do anything about that. My, my goal is to try to help people that have lost jobs make a transition. And one of the things that I tell them is don't worry about unemployment because there's almost as many job opportunities available today as there were five or ten years ago. Unemployment is not the driver of jobs. What's the driver of job opportunities is churn within companies. The average tenure of a business, of a person in, in our uh, economy, ten, the, how long they stay at their job is 3.7 years, based on a big uh, study by The Economist magazine. That means that if you take 100 jobs in any given year, about 25% of them are, you know, people are going to be leaving. So 25 out of 100 jobs are going to be available. Now, if the, you know, the unemployment drops by five, so you go from 100 jobs to 95, you still have 25 jobs that are there. And, you know, again, I think the key is for people not to get caught up in things they can't control when in job search, the key in job search, and control, and, and just focus on what they can control. I, I think that, you know, you bring out a, a really relevant and paramount point there. It's obviously we're going to see a lot of things out there of who knows what happens tomorrow. And, um, you know, for people that are actively employed, who knows what tomorrow brings for them? Um 
I, I think one thing, though, that it speaks to, with all the change that we have going on and uncertainty, that we can focus some time on being well prepared. And, uh, and, and, and I'd like to you know, get your take on what would a person do today to prepare if what if they're next? Well, again, I, you know, it goes back to what I said before, invest in your network. You know, that's the best thing you can do to prepare for job dislocation. Again, if, you know, I said, you know, people lose jobs about one every, once every four years. Senior executives lose jobs about once every two years. The, re- the reality of the workforce today with all the change going on is you're constantly going to be looking for jobs. And there's only one answer, Alan. It is investing in other people so that you get into a situation where they'll want to help you and Al, when what, you need them. And Al, what I hear when you say invest in your network is serve others. Exactly. Certain, don't just have a Rolodex of friends, exactly. people you have a number with. Serve them. Get to know them. Find ways to help them so that when you're in need, they'll be able to help exactly. you. Exactly. That's the whole concept of reciprocity. Well, that's all excellent, uh, excellent advice and things to be prepared. And I would just add one caveat to that from a financial standpoint: keep your debt low. If if yeah. you're in debt, get the debt down. That, that's probably one of the greatest stress factors yep. if a yep. person is out of work is how do you get the bills paid? And uh, we're we're living in a society of of this great uncertainty. But I think having the network, having a focus on uh, you know. Being prepared, self-reliant, self-sufficient is all all good and well. Right. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, Al, and we'll uh, we'll continue on with the next segment. But this is Alan Olson with America Dreams Keys to Life Success. We got to take a quick break for a sponsor. We'll be back with more information on what to do in your job search after this short break. Visit Alan's website at roco.com. More American Dreams is next on AM 1220 KDOW. 